Wake up and get yourself to church. That's what many of you are doing right now. And thank you so much for being a part of Bridgeway Community Church. 30 years of amazing ministry. Bridgeway, you did it. You made it. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, I have already come. <laughs> you know that song? Tis grace that brought me safe this far, and grace will lead me home. If it wasn't for God's grace, we wouldn't be here today. And whether you started with me 30 years ago or 30 minutes ago, we get the opportunity of being a multicultural body of fully devoted followers of Christ who are moving forward in unity and love to reach our community, our culture, and our world for Jesus Christ. Our mission is to build into one another as we build bridges to our community. But our purpose really is to reach. And we hope that we've reached you over these years. And we hope that we'll continue to reach into your hearts and to your homes so that many people will come to know Christ in a way that grows them up. At the beginning of the ministry year, we launched the theme, Mature and Mighty in Christ. And in a series that I did right as we gave the vision message and kicked the year off, the very first line of my vision message was this. For Christ's sake, grow up. When I was a child, I thought like a child, spoke like a child. But when I became a man, thought like a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. The idea of growing up, 30 is that time when you say, you know what, adulting is here. And hopefully we, as your beloved church, have helped you in some way grow a little bit more in your faith over this last year, more mature, more mighty in Christ. And my prayer is that out of all the sermons that we preached as a clergy team and that I preached, imparted at least one valuable seed that the Holy Spirit could produce spiritual fruit and growth in your life over this year. In addition, I truly believe that the 30-hour revival service that we did on October 30th was a turning point in our ministry to elevate our spiritual consciousness, taking us to another level and another dimension of faith. And even that, that revival season from October to January, I believe God did a turning in us. I was just talking to a young lady, a leader in our church yesterday, and I said, did I mention you walking with a, a, a new man? To which she said, yes, he came to me during the revival season. <laughs> Who knows what happens when revival takes place? Over 350 of you were in that service for 30 hours, and thousands of you have watched it online, and it's still online today. Also, at the beginning of the ministry year, we gave you a 30-challenge initiative. We provided you with 30 different ways you could grow as we would walk throughout the year. And I invited you to choose three out of the 30. You could choose more, but look at all 30 and say, which three do I want to commit to over the next year? And now here we are, nine or ten months later. So, how did you do? Do you feel like you've grown more mature and mighty in your faith over this last ministry year? And if not, why not? You know, as spiritual leaders, our job is to try to present opportunities and platforms for spiritual growth and development in your life. But your job was to choose three ways to grow in your walk with God. And if you took us up on choosing three ways and stuck with them, there's no way that you could not have grown in your walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, here are a few ways that we've provided opportunities for you to grow spiritually. Number one, we brought you 39 weeks of consistent sermon series and worship services on Sundays. And one of the challenges was that you would complete 30 Sundays of church attendance, either in person or online. Out of the 39 weeks between uh, September and June, that you would say, you know what, I'm going to attend church for 30 weeks, either online or in person. How many of you chose that one? And by the way, how did you do? 
Well, I'm going to tell you, there are 28 names of people. I mean, I wish it was 30, but at least 28 names of people who registered and said, we're going to do this. And they did it. And guess what? We gave each one of them a certificate of completion as they registered to do this. And you can see those names on the screen. And I know some of those names. And I'm like, thank you, God, because I know that they've grown spiritually because they have made a commitment to come to church. And not only them, but, you know, as you made your choices, how did you how did you grow spiritually? You know, at the very beginning, after the vision message, I did a five week series called High Five. Does anybody remember that one? We talked about the five-fold ministry that Paul writes about in Ephesians. And he says that the apostles and the prophets, the pastors, the teachers, and the evangelists are a gift that God gave to the church to help equip you and equip me to do ministry. Sometimes maybe we have our favorite of those offices. Maybe we like pastor teacher because that kind of fits our what we grew up with or apostle prophet because that's what we grew up with or or evangelist. But you know what? The Lord says I gave all five offices to help the church become what it needs to be in order for people to be prepared for ministry. And then after that series, I did a series called the Next Gen Faith Series. Do you remember that? Where we had some of the younger people speak. Rachel Taylor was, was one of them, and Will Easton, and, and, and Aunt Patton, and, and, and Cody Mitchner, and Kevin Turpin. And they, they, they brought to us the word of God. And then there are other series I did. Some of, you, some of them you'll remember, some of them you won't. And I surely didn't remember them all because, and I preached them. But, you know, the week in and week out. I did a series called The Name I Need back in November and December. And then we did our Christmas services. Remember the home for Christmas production in the airport? And then we did a three-week series in the new year called Revival, Living Water, Fresh Wind, and New Wine. We had our guest speaker series, Ilona Proy and Nona Jones and Tim Webster, Erwin McManus, Israel Houghton, and Adrian Bailon. Then we had the State of the Church Address, and before you know it, we're now into March, and we did a series called Be Encouraged. I went away with a team for a while to do ministry for, to uh, Ukrainian refugees, and when we got back, did a five-week series called Threshold. And a lot of individual messages by Pastor Eli and Pastor Gary Coiro and, and Will Eastham and Lisa Bryson, how well did she do last week? Sandy Pope and Dave Mitchner and Dave Heiliger. So I'm very grateful for the diet that we have provided for you to grow spiritually. But not only did we produce these 39 services, but secondly, here's something else we did. A 30-minute Thursday Bible study platform. Our pastoral resident, Will Eastham hosted this where our clergy and elders would teach on a platform at 1230 every single Thursday for 30 minutes. And the average attendance of that right there on, on YouTube, on Facebook Live, average attendance was 283, much larger than the average church in America. But we provided that for you. And some of you chose that. Some of you said, you know what, I can commit to that. And guess what? You can watch all of them. They're all on the YouTube platform. Here's a third opportunity we gave to you, and that is 30 minutes of prayer with the pastor on the 30th of every month for 30 minutes at 730. And I was committed to that. I only missed one, and Pastor Gary stepped in and helped me do that one while I was out of the country. But it was an average of about 70 of you who were committed to praying with me once a month. In addition to these three big things that I highlighted, you know, the Sunday services and the midday uh, Bible study and the monthly prayer, which is basically worship, word, and prayer, we also offered Wednesday night e-live coordinated by Pastor Sandy Pope and other teachers. We had men's groups and women's groups and weekly sermon conversations. And overall, the numbers of your participation are pretty impressive for the 30 challenges. Nearly 800 of you participated in the 30 challenges by joining groups online and choosing three or more ways to grow. So let me just say to you, Bridgeway, thank you. 
I'm proud of you for the commitment that you made to grow in your faith. Give yourselves a hand. You can do that right there where you are. Give yourselves a hand. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know you're in your kitchen by yourself. That's all right. Put the coffee down. Do this real quick and then pick the coffee up. (laughs) And for those of you who are in the service here at 8 a.m., it's a broadcast service. And so while thousands of people may be watching around the world and at home, and many of you have watched it at home as well, I want to say for those of you that have come at 8 a.m., thank you uh, for coming at 8 a.m. I know it's early but I pray that it blesses you. And uh, friends, you can come at 8 a.m. as well. Yes, it's broadcast, uh, so there's cameras in the face and stuff, but you can worship here and you can respond here. So it's an in-person service as well. So from this point on, if you're thinking, is that 8 a.m. service open to me? Yes, it's open to you. Make sure uh, you put that on your list, especially as summer's coming. You may say, you know what? Let me get my worship on for the first hour or two of the day and then go on about my business. Remember, we have an 8 a.m. service. Some other numbers you should know, over this year of 39 weeks or so, we brought in 50 new partners. That means people who have gone through the interview process, committed to serving and giving at the church, and under uh, Pastor Gary's leadership and many other volunteers, 50 partners have joined Bridgeway. So thank you for that. And what about number of volunteers who've served? That was one of the options you could choose out of the 30, where you check off and say, you know what? I'm going to give 30 hours of volunteer service. 30 hours. Guess how many did that? 455. That's pretty cool. Served Christ for 30 hours this year. Now, personally, one of the areas that I chose, and I chose many of them, was to lose 30 pounds. Remember that one? How many of y'all joined me in that one? Well, I, by, you know, a point of accountability, I need to tell you, no, I didn't hit it. I'm about halfway there. I have to admit I didn't hit the goal, uh, but I will continue throughout the summer because I'm, I'm committed to the goal. It may just take a little bit longer. By the way, if you're in person after the service, there's uh, going to be food outside. And uh, this makes it a little bit difficult when they tell you that. Uh, y- y'all may want to get to church today, by the way, because they tell me that there's going to be like jerk chicken, mac and cheese, collard greens. Like, Lord, if you could just make no calories on Sunday, like just make it, like just wipe it away, that would be great. But uh, thank you so much uh, for all of you who have been putting together even things like that, that people don't see you cooking behind the scenes. But listen, just because the ministry year is over, my desire is not only to reach my goal, but my hope for you is that you would reach yours to continue to grow spiritually with the Lord. I hope you don't stop attending church, praying, fasting, reading scripture, shredding the pounds if you need to, or getting more fit if you need to, or giving away material possessions that are weighing you down. Please, friends, use this summer to reboot, to re-engage, and to restore your soul. In fact, we have a wonderful sermon series coming up this summer for you that we've crafted. If you look on the screen, it's called God's Got Your Number. What biblical numbers mean for everyday Christians. And I have a great slate of clergy speakers who are going to bring the word this summer. And so I'm looking forward to that. You should as well. Next week is Father's Day. And for the first time preaching on Father's Day at Bridgeway, Pastor David Heiliger is going to bring the word. So may you continue to become mature and mighty in Christ as you go into the summer. I'll be back for my summer character study the second week of August, and I'm looking forward to seeing what God has in store, Lord willing. Now what I want to do as I bring this end of the year wrap up to its conclusion, I want to take you to the passage that we started with. It's in Ephesians chapter 4. It's verses verses 11 through 16. It's what we have printed on the bracelets that we passed out for the year. And in this passage, there are several words that are mentioned two times that I want to highlight. The word mature, the word build or built, the word grow or grows, and the word work or works. And in this paragraph that Paul writes as he's speaking to the Ephesian Christians, he highlights these words, and this is what gave me inspiration for the mature and mighty theme. Because I know my job 
as apostle, prophet, pastor, teacher, evangelist, whatever offices that we hold here as spiritual leaders. Our job is to try to help you experience what the apostle Paul is talking about. So let me read it to you. Verse 11, so Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers to equip his people for works of service. There's the word work. So that the body of Christ may be built up. There's the word built. Until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the son of God and become mature. There's the word mature. Attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. Verse 14. Then we will no longer be infants tossed back and forth by the waves and blown here or there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceitful scheming. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow, there's that word one time, to become in every respect the mature, there's a second time that word used, body of him who is the head, that is Christ. Last verse, verse 16. From him, the whole body, joined together by every supporting ligament, grows, second time, and builds, second time, itself up in love as each part does its work, second time. The author of Ephesians is encouraging us as believers, for Christ's sake, grow up. Staying young as spiritual babies in the faith will leave believers vulnerable to every wind of doctrine and crafty deception. And I believe more is coming. You never know what happens in the summer, but something always happens in the summer. Don't be blown away by crafty deception and winds of doctrine. God wants us to be mighty and mature in our function, in our faith, in our fullness, in our fortitude and in our fit. That's the High Five series. Maybe this summer you can go back and watch the five messages talking about how we grow in our function, our faith, our fullness, our fortitude, and our fit. But there's something else that's mentioned twice I think that's very important here. In verse 13, Paul says, attaining to the whole measure, the whole measure, of the fullness of Christ. In verse 16, he says, from him, the whole body is joined together. Whole measure, whole body. Maybe the summer challenge for you is this. Maybe you'll ask yourself this question. Jesus, what must I do to be whole? God desires for us to be whole. We're broken up, we're fragmented, not only in the body of Christ, but maybe even in our own bodies, in our own mind, in our own spirit. Maybe there's a fragmentation in our mentality, in our souls. Ask God, God, this summer, help me to be whole. Does anybody desire to be whole? There's one thing to be healed, there's another thing to be whole. And may God not only be your healer, but may God help you to become whole. Now, as I conclude, I'll share just a little concern with you. I'm always concerned at my summer sabbatical time, which I've been doing for over 20 some years, that the church is not gonna do very well with attendance and with offerings. God has oftentimes surprised me and I come back and I say, wow, Lord, you gave us good summer attendance and good offerings. What I'm asking of you is if you are going to go away physically this summer, would you commit to attending online even if you're away? And secondly, what I'm going to ask of you, if you are away this summer, will you please continue to give to the work of the Lord? This is important for us because believe it or not, and I'll just share with you that our giving has been down ever since we've been back in the building. Is that the weirdest thing ever? If you would have told me, Doc, close the church building and giving will go up. 
We were at 100, average 101 to 102 percent of hitting our offering goal while we were out of the church building. Can you believe that? I would sometimes look at the numbers and say, this is unbelievable. How could this be? How could it be that we're hitting our numbers, but the church's building is closed? And then everybody wants to get back to church, get back to church, get back to church. And we open the doors and we do three services. Now, yeah, you have all those expenses you didn't have before, right? Like you're turning on the lights and the plumbing and everything else in the building. So there was, that was an upside to that. But now we have people in the church and the offerings are down. How does that happen? I don't know. But we're down by, listen, $250,000. So again, I don't know how that happens. God is sovereign. You know that you're probably still giving or maybe you started giving less because of inflation or I have no idea. I'm not in your pockets, but I am letting you know that's where we are, because when we get to the end of the fiscal year, June 30, like we do every year, July 1 to June 30, it's not a calendar year. So if you're thinking about an end of the year gift, don't wait till December. Do it now, because June 30th is the end of our calendar year. And if you're so inclined to give, then please do that. But always remember what you're giving to. You're giving to the advancement of the gospel. And for all of you who have served Christ here, not just Pastor Dan, which I'm so grateful for, but there's some of you who've been here even longer, on staff, not on staff, attending the church since. You'll remember when we were, when we were in tents, not this time, but the last time, or when we were in the lobby, or when we were even at a community college. And for some of you, even before then, at the Slayton House, and a few of you, even before then, on Starrett Place in a little office building, and maybe a couple of you in the basement of my mother's home, planning and thinking about what a church one day would look like. We always said, it's got to be a place where we advance the gospel, where we share Jesus Christ, and that would be the number one thing. And all the creative arts, all the music, all the videos, all the plays, all the dramas, all the ministries for the kids, for the young people, whatever the ministry is, we're doing it all so people can come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And man, I haven't done everything right over these 30 years. But the one thing I can say has always been spot on. We have never come off of the message of the gospel. In fact, just Friday on the air on my radio show, I had two minutes left before the show was gonna end and the commercials would come on. And I had to decide, do I take a caller or not? And I'm like, if I take the caller and they get in all this, all this drama about you know, how I have a, a, a child and, and from another you know, parent or something like that, uh, and I don't, don't wanna tell my spouse, what should I do, Dr. Anderson? I don't have time for something like that. But what did I do? The Spirit of God said, take the call. And so I took the call. So let's listen to the last two minutes of Real Talk with Dr. David Anderson. Michelle is on the line. She'll be my final caller. Hello, Miss Michelle. I've got about a minute left, but I want to talk to you. Hi, Dr. Anderson. I'll make this quick. Um, I listened to your show yesterday, and um, I realized that I don't have a relationship with Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I grew up in a family where I accepted what I was told to believe, and so I don't have a personal relationship. How do I fix that? By praying and asking Christ to come into your life right now. You want to do it? Yes. Okay, pray after me. Say, Dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to be saved. I want to have a personal relationship with you. I want to have a personal relationship with you. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you for dying on the cross. And rising again from the dead. And rising again from the dead. I turn away from my sins. I turn away from my sins. And I invite you into my heart right now. And I invite you into my heart right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Look at that. You just made a decision to follow Jesus Christ. You just got saved. 
<laughs> That's it. You're done. Now, now you've just been born again. Now the relationship okay. begins. You get to start growing in your faith. Uh, are you a part, are you a part of a good church anywhere? I'm not. No. Okay. Well, we're gonna change that too. I want you to hold on. We're gonna get your information so we can help you grow the best we can. How's that, Miss Michelle? You can say Bridgeway is about many things, but I hope you'll always say that Bridgeway is about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And just like Michelle, may you pray to invite Jesus Christ to come into your life by saying that prayer that she prayed. Say, dear Jesus, I invite you into my life. Yes, I know I'm a sinner, but I want a relationship with you. I'm so sorry for my sins. And now I'm making a decision to follow you as my Lord and Savior. Please save me. Thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross for me. Amen. And if you prayed that prayer to receive Christ, guess what? You just crossed over from death to life. Let us know about it, and we'll help you grow. And Lord, as we thank you for the 30 years that you've given us in faithful ministry, we ask, Lord, that you would continue to help us to stay faithful to your gospel until the day you come back and take us home. For it is in the name of Jesus we pray. Together everyone said, amen and amen.